didn't know that military spouses in that particular state had a waiver. And so the military spouses are frustrated because the person answering the phone didn't know the law. A few months ago, when the National Governors Association held its annual winter meeting in Washington, we hosted a breakfast for them at the vice president's residence. And during their visit, I spoke to them about the hardships that spouses face with frequent moves and professional licensing requirements. Later, several governors expressed interest in helping to improve military spouse employment in their states. And recently, South Dakota's new governor, Kristi Noem, Iowa's Governor Kim Reynolds signed a law to help fast-track licensing for military spouses. I mean, you can understand. They go to a state. Sometimes they have to get education. Then they have to apply for the license. They have to pay the fee. All the while, they're trying to find if there's even a job available. Arizona's Governor Doug Ducey also signed a bill to recognize out-of-state licenses, and I know that many governor's offices have rep- representatives attending the summit here today. So they're doing it in Arizona. They're doing it in other states. I also want to applaud the bipartisan efforts underway on Capitol Hill to address military spouse employment challenges. Last month, I had the opportunity to join Senators Cotton and Shaheen and Representatives Banks and Davis to help announce the Portable Certification of Spouses Act of 2019. Did you catch that? That's the PCS Act of 2019. And the whole point of it is to provide federal funds to states who can waive the licensing fee for these spouses. But it's bipartisan. It's in the House and the Senate. Since introducing the bill, three additional legislators have signed on as co-sponsors, and they're working to garner more co-sponsors and pass the bill. In closing, I want you to know that the Trump administration values our service members and their families. We are so proud of our armed forces. I'm so proud every time I see my daughter-in-law. We saw her this weekend. Uh, It was Mike's 60th birthday, and so we got to see them, which is rare, and just... To know some of the things that she's dealing with, I just was so proud of her. I mean, I'm very proud of our son, but I was also very proud of Sarah. And we know that the spouses are the backbone of the military families, and they contribute directly to the strength and readiness of our armed forces. It is our priority to take care of our spouses and to also take care of our children so that service members can stay focused on their mission. Our spouses are ready, waiting, and eager to come alongside businesses in a win-win partnership. Let's do our part. Let's keep the momentum going and create employment solutions for military spouses because it is the right thing to do. I'm so pleased to be with here with all of you today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for what you're doing in your communities. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.